Scavenger receptors are found on many cells including macrophages, platelets, monocytes and even smooth muscle cells and are usually known by its role in the cardiovascular system. Scavenger receptors are receptors which bind and attach to LDLs, low density lipoproteins. And if you don't know what an LDL is, they are basically just bad cholesterol. And they also float around your blood vessels. And a lot flo floats around your blood vessels if you eat a lot of bad fats. Junk food. An example of a scavenger LDL reaction can be shown here. When a monocyte or macrophage is in the bloodstream, for example, and it comes in contact with an LDL, it will bind to it using its scavenger receptor. Then what's bound, that macrophage, will froth up and turn into a foam cell. And this foam cell will just rest and sit on the vessel walls and basically attach to the vessel walls. Now if there are a lot of LDLs and this constantly occurs, there can be an accumulation of these foam cells. When this happens, it can clog up the blood vessels and lead to uh, problems. A very familiar disease that which, which can lead from these foam cells is known as atherosclerosis. But we won't talk about the scavenger receptor's role in this cholesterol business because scavenger receptors have another role in which it can actually bind to foreign pathogens. Therefore, scavenger receptors is also a pathogen recognition receptor, or PRR, which can bind to PAMPs, pathogen associated molecular patterns. Now, I would like to introduce you to some well known types of scavenger receptors, and there are many. For the start, I will just draw two receptors. Why two? Um, you'll s soon find out why. Now, the first one here that I'll draw is known as the scavenger receptor A1, uh, and, or scavenger receptor A2, or SRA1 and SRA2 for short. And the other one, um, the second one, which is taller, is known as Marco. Now, these two receptors can be categorized as a class A scavenger receptor because it is similar in structure. Now it is similar in structure because it both has a similar lower domain as well as a notable collagen domain on the top which allows it to bind to the same things. Now knowing that this is class A, there are other classes B, C, D and E, all of which have special things that differentiate, differentiates them to other receptors. But I won't really talk about other receptors in more detail. I will mostly look at class A and class B scavenger receptors. CD36 is a well-known class B scavenger receptor and it has two lower domains attached to the lipid bilayer. Now I will also circle the names because these are the receptors names that will be brought up again during this unprofessional presentation. Now CD36 class of class B actually also binds to high density lipoproteins which are the good cholesterol. Other types of scavenger receptors that we will just quickly look at is the scavenger receptor C1 of class C, uh, CD68 of class D, uh, LOX1, which, will we, which we will use later on, so I'll just circle it in red, of class E, and the last one is known as SCARF of class F, which the F has, class F has gone off the page. Now all these different receptors, they bind to different all these different types of lipo uh, low density lipoproteins, because there are many types. So let's, but let's just concentrate now on the, the, the class A and class B scavenger receptors. Why are we just concentrating on class A and class B? Well, it's because they're expressed on macrophages for one example and they actually help in phagocytosis, in engulfing of pathogens. So scavenger receptor A1 or SRA1 and SRA2 they bind to the cell walls cell walls of well-known pathogens such as S. aureus and E. coli with its collagen domains. So it binds to the cell walls, remember. And CD36 it binds also to um, S. aureus, the pathogen, but also to diacylglycerol which are components of v ma many various pathogens. Therefore, it can bind to fatty, uh, long chains of fatty acids of particular pathogens. Now, it should also be noted that these scavenger receptors, they actually work as a co-receptor for toll-like receptors, or TLRs. And if you don't know what a toll-like receptor is, uh, please watch a video on it, because it's a well-known pathogen recognition receptor. But now, let's just look at a quick example of the scavenger receptor working as a co-receptor. So here we have the cell with toll-like receptors 2 and toll-like receptor 6 and these two and these and this is known as a heterodimer because it's two different TLRs uh, binding together. Now in order for this TLR to bind to a component of a pathogen, usually the cell wall or lipoproteins of a pathogen, it needs the help of a scavenger receptor. One that I circled before, LOX1 of class E for example. So when a heterodimer, when this heterodimer TLR binds to the PAMP, 
with the help of a scavenger receptor. It will initiate a cascade of events within the cytosol. Final product making a uh, transcription factor. Now this transcription factor will then enter the nucleus and encode genes for cytokines or pro-inflammatory cytokines. And now these cytokines will then be sent out of the cell to assist in the immune response, for example, attracting more immune cells. So that was how scavenger receptors work as a co-receptor. Now let's see how it works by itself as a pathogen recognition receptor, PRR. So here's a cell of a membrane of a macrophage, let's just say, with, let's look at the receptor with the collagen domain from class A, the SRA1. So when, when, it, when it binds to the cell wall component of an E. coli, or it can be another pathogen, it will engulf that E. coli. Uh, a process called phagocytosis, because a macrophage is a phagocyte. Now, and the pathogen with the receptor will be in what's now called a phagosome. But the macrophage, it also consists of lysosomes, and these are packaged up, basically packaged up acidic parcels which help with eliminating pathogens. Now, so these lysosomes will enter the phagosome containing the pathogen and release its acidic content. It will fuse with the membrane and release all these uh, its content. Now, the vessel where all this is happening now is called a phagolysosome um, f because it's a phagosome and a lysosome together. And this lysosome's acidic content will help eliminate and destroy that particular pathogen. So, um, that was fairly simple. It kind of works the same process. The scavenger receptors kind of work the same process as the normal phagocytosis process. It's just a, it's just concentrating on scavenger receptors, basically. Um, but anyway, and if you want to actually learn more about how the lysosomes and how it actually um, eliminates the pathogen with its contents and how it fuses with the with the phagosome, uh, please watch the phagocytosis presentation. Um, but thanks for watching. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe, perhaps. Thank you.